Are you tired of writing these long SQL queries? Like trying to figure out where does the right join go, where does the left join go? I know it's a pain, right? So I've brought you a tool by the name of Ask Your Database, which will help you in chatting with your database and figuring all these complex queries just like that. So it doesn't really matter if you're using MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server, or even Snowflake. When it comes to data visualization and business intelligence, Ask Your Database is going to be your pal. So let's go and learn more about it. Welcome back, everybody. So I'm on the web page of Ask Your Database and loud and clear, you guys can see chat with SQL Database using AI and ChatGPT for SQL. So Ask Your Database is more like a no-code, no SQL platform, which lets you query your database in natural language. So it will take your natural language query and map it or convert it into SQL queries, which happens to be the best part about this platform. Alongside, you can do a lot of stuff with this tool as well. You can create charts, you can create views around your database tables. So it's pretty amazing. All right, let's go through some of the use cases. So we have business intelligence, no more juggling between developers and BI tools, something that we just discussed. And then we have data visualization, instantly transform complex data into clear, engaging visuals, no coding needed. Perfect. And we have schema design and migration, design schema and make migrations without hiring a data engineer, sorry, data engineers, or writing a single line of code. And I believe this happens to be a great offering by Ask Your Database, which happens to be, uh, so you get internal tools as a desktop application for Mac and Windows, but you can even create a chatbot for yourself. For example, if you have a department, a reporting department, and you really want to fasten up your process, and then you can use uh, their internal tool for that. Uh, but if you have a customer facing website, like an e-commerce store, you can create a chatbot wrapper, which acts as a middleman or a middle agent, which helps you and guides you about the products and different details about the products. So it's kind of cool. So let's go ahead in the download section. So here you can see both of these offerings and here's a nice breakdown for the use cases that it offers. For example, use case for chatbot is customer facing and desktop is an internal tool, data privacy, uh, data analysis, cannot view all when return data is over 600 tokens. So yeah, there are some limitations. You guys can go through it. So I already have the Mac application installed. Let's go ahead and work this out. So this is the Ask Your Database interface. So we can create a connection over here. We have a couple of options over here. Postgres, MySQL, SQL Server, MongoDB, Oracle, and Snowflake. So before we do that, let's talk about the database itself. So I have a nice looking database, which happens to be around a e-commerce store. So you have customers, you have employees, and there are certain offices dispersed all around the world. Uh, there are a list of products and then you have orders and order details. So I think it's a pretty decent database for starters to actually uh, run this experiment on Ask a Database. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and try this out. So before we do that, we have to create the connection. So I'm using MariaDB, which happens to be a forked version of MySQL. So it is MySQL in general. So I'm going to select this. All right, there we go. I'm going to hit connect. Perfect. And we are in. So before we begin, let's go back to our database and go through some of the tables. So we have a customer table. So the very first thing we can do is check the count of the customer, which happens to be a very simplistic query. So count of the customer execute. So that's 122. Let's go ahead and ask the same thing with uh, ask a database. What is the total count of customers? And I'm going to hit send. Okay, it, it says 122. Perfect. So let's go through some other stuff. So we have offices. 
would say San Francisco, Boston, dispersed almost all around the world. Uh, so I see three offices in USA. Let's query this. Uh, how many offices are there in USA? So I'm going to hit send. Okay, so three offices in USA, and there we go. We have these three offices in USA. Then we have employees, and as you can see, we have office, we have office code, and within the employee table, we have office code as a foreign key. So let's test one thing. All right, so what is the office code for San Francisco? So it's basically one. So let's go ahead. What is the office code let's for go San Francisco? Send. And it seems one. That's correct. Perfect. Let's go ahead to employee table. And now my query would be how many employees are working in the San Francisco office? right okay there are six employees working in the san francisco office pretty nice let's go ahead and verify that so employees let's say where office code is equal to one and i'm gonna hook it up with a count over here perfect so six employees six employees awesome uh, let's go ahead and ask it something a bit more complex, like um, what are the top products? What are the top selling products as per orders? Hit send. Nice. So the top selling products and here's a list. So it does very well in terms of, uh, you know, uh, joins as well. So we have the product join with auto table. Nice, pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and see what else can we do. All right, so within the auto table, we have a status which says shipped. So most of the orders are shipped, but really almost all the orders are shipped. Okay, I say result and canceled. Oh, so what we can do, we can check how many orders were basically canceled. So how many orders have the status canceled? Let's hit send. Okay, six orders that have the status canceled. Let's go ahead and verify this. So I can say where status is equal to canceled and again we need to hook up our count method perfect I'm gonna hit execute and six orders and six orders perfect all right so I'm kind of impressed by the accuracy aspect and the latency aspect it's doing really good on single tables and even multiple tables like join between two or three tables and I, I really see a huge potential of this tool within, you know, uh, business intelligence departments. Because even if you're a product manager, even if you don't know how to write a SQL query, you can just get up and running with your task. You really don't have to go looking for a developer, tweak that SQL query, and then get the results. So this tool really, really bridges that gap between uh, these reporting departments and development itself. So pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and explore the uh, chatbot. All right, so I'm back on the site. I'm already signed in, so I'm just gonna go ahead to the dashboard. So here we see uh, a couple of options. You can create a chatbot and you have the analytics section. Nice. So the analytics are offered as a chatbot itself. Pretty nice. So you have started questions like how many chatbot do I have? How many customers were created last month? Awesome. And then we have the billing section, which is more about, you know, your usage on chat GPT uh, four and three. So I'm going to hit create over here. So I'm going to call it testbot. 
test bot and this is a test chatbot, not feeling creative. Then I'm gonna select chat GPT-4 as the default model and I'm gonna select yes more uh, MySQL and I'll have to provide a connection string. So here's a stretch about connection string. My database is local. I don't have a production version of it. And if I just copy and paste my local string, local connection string, it's not gonna work because uh, ask a database is hosted somewhere else. My machine is working locally. It won't be able to access it. So in order to do that, I have used the ng-rock tool. Uh, it's a great uh, application facing tool, which you can use uh, for load balancing and sort of exposing your local connections to the internet. So how you can do that, that's pretty simple. All right, so in order to do that, we have two particular options to expose our local connections to the internet. We have a TCP tunnel option. So what we can do, since a local host on a machine is running with a specific post, in MySQL's case, the port number is 3306. So to sort of expose it to internet, we need a host name and we need a port number, which can be offered by tunneling it within the TCP connection. So here we go. Uh, so this is our forwarding information and this is our new host name and this is our new port name. All right, so I'm gonna copy this within my connection string and feed it to the chatbot. All right, so I'm gonna paste it over here. Uh, we can use the access control parameter, which sort of uh, uses to ensure the customers only have access to their own data, but we don't have such a requirement. We can also add some example SQL queries. Uh, if you really have a dense database, I suggest that you do that. We can also add a knowledge base so, but in our case, it's not necessary. We just want to, you know, get up and running with the chatbot. So let's go ahead and create. Okay, our bot is created. Our connection was successful. Perfect. So let's go ahead and test it. What is the total count of customers? All right, so the answer is 122, which happens to be correct. And our chatbot is ready to go. So if we come back here and we have a option of integrate chatbot over here. So we have a couple of steps that we can follow to integrate our chatbot within our web application or you know a particular platform. So here, firstly, we have to create an authorized session. So we have the curl command over here. And in return, we'll get a URL. Now, this URL is basically your chatbot itself. It's like a secure connection to your chatbot. So um, here's a backend code for that. It's in Next.js, pretty simple stuff. It's fetching the URL for the session. In this case, uh, the URL is provided uh, as a curl command, but here it's just hitting the URL provided with the, uh, you know, uh, the secret key, which is uh, obviously whenever you sign up to ask a database, you'll get one secret key. So pretty simple stuff. And here's the React code for that. It's fetching or hitting the API listed over here. Once it gets the URL, it's sort of sending it or setting it within a iframe. So here's your iframe. So it's pretty simple. Uh, the URL is basically your tunnel towards uh, your chatbot and you're good to go. Pretty simple stuff. Awesome stuff. So Ask a Database happens to be a great tool and I see where the future is heading. So eventually all the future communications would be text-based or in terms of generative UI, something that Ask a Database offers in terms of generating view or mapping the SQL queries. You can even create charts. So it's amazing. So that's a review for Ask a Database. Let me know what you guys think. And let me know if you have a specific use case that is being solved by Ask a Database.